So let's move on to our last talk, uh, last formal talk to conference, uh, which is by uh, Rikako Ashimoto on um, proximity zone in uh, fainter quasars. Please go ahead. Okay, I will share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yep, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm Rikako Ishimoto, a master student of the University of Tokyo. First of all, thank you to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my research. Today, I would like to talk about the proximity zone analysis of faint quasar spectra at Let's 6. The paper about this study has just been accepted, so I would be happy if you check our paper. I think you have already listened about the importance of proximity zone in the talks so far, but let me briefly introduce the observational studies of proximity zone. In earlier studies, it is said that proximity zone evolved with red shoes, like shown in the left figure. Mm -hmm. However, recently, Iris et al. measured the proximity zone sizes of 30 luminous quasars and found a shallow redshift evolution, shown in the right figure. One of the reasons of this disagreement of these studies is that they are based only on luminous quasars. The proximity zone measurements of a wider luminosity range is needed to conclude the trend. So we measure the proximity zone sizes of fainter quasars, which are thought to be more common in the universe. We use quasars which are discovered in Subaru Heise exploration of low luminosity quasar project, Shelux. Shelux's, Shelux's project is based on HSC SSP survey. Using the wide field of view of HSC, we have discovered around 19 Heise faint quasars and some follow up observations such as C2 or MG2 are conducted. So our sample for the measurement of proximity zone consists of 11 quasars from Shelx and 26 quasars which are used in Naira Setao 2017. Hereafter, I call this 11 Shelx quasars faint sample and the other 26 quasars bright sample. In this figure, I show the distribution of the absolute magnitude and redshift. The orange dots and gray dots represent the faint and the bright sample. As you can see, the absolute magnitude of the faint sample are down to minus 22.83, significantly fainter than those of earlier studies. And in order to measure accurately proximity zone, we limit our sample to the quasars whose redshift measures by MG2 or C2 or CO emission lines. Since Lima alpha redshift have large uncertainties in estimating intrinsic spectra, so we excluded such object from our sample. And let me explain the method to measure proximity zone. The intrinsic spectra for cal calculating the transmission are estimated by principal component analysis, PCA. We used the principal components from Suzuki et al. 2005. The example of the spectra are shown in this figure. Also, we used different principal components from those used in Naira et al. But our measurements of the bright sample are in good agreement from those in Naira et al. shown in this figure. 
except for the some quasars with updated redshift in show, showing the red points. The definition of the proximity zone is the same as used in the previous studies. Here, let me explain our results. First, this figure shows the mean stacked spectrum of faint and bright sample shown in orange and black line. As you can see in this figure, the, bright, uh, the faint sample shows a narrower lime alpha emission line. And we measure the proximity zone sizes of faint and bright sample. And faint sample have a significantly smaller proximity zone than that of bright sample. And next, we investigated the luminosity dependence of our sample. The red and gray dots indicate the faint and the bright sample, respectively. And the power of it to our sample shows this relation shown in blue line. And this relation is close to the prediction with the ionized IGM shown in green line. So this implies that the surrounding IGM is mostly ionized at the epoch. So in order to examine the redshift evolution after this, we use the best bit, this relation, to correct the proximity zone sizes by luminosity. So hereafter, I show the proximity zone sizes of proximity zone sizes by collected collected by luminosity. And this figure shows the redshift evolution of our sample. Our a power of it to all or quasars of our sample shows shown in blue line shows this relation. This is slightly steeper than that of Iris et al, but significantly shallower than that of those of earlier studies. And our faint sample shows no redshift evolution shown in this orange line. So we concluded that our measurement shows a mild evolution, suggesting that proximity zone sizes are not sensitive to the neutral fraction of the universe. Interestingly, uh, yeah. then Davis et al. 2018, in the, their simulation demonstrated that young quasars showing this purple line can to have small proximity zone sizes. And in our normalization, this criteria corresponds to 0 0.9 megaparsec shown in this red region. The two quasars in the faint sample and two in the bright sample meets this criteria. And such small proximity zone suggests the young quasar age, younger than 10 to 4 years, was the existence of the neutral gas island in the lion site. So in order to check the possibility of the young age, we examined the black hole masses and the Dinton ratio of our sample. But there is no clear correlation between them. However, some observational results supports the possibility of the young age. First, one of the young quasar candidates, this shows significant carbon for blue shift with respect to MJ2 lines, suggesting that strong outflow due to young quasar age. And another young quasar candidate, this were observed to have no lime alpha halo, implying that this do not have enough time to light up surrounding IgM. And interestingly, 
a faint sample has high fraction of small proximity zone than that of bright sample, but but larger sample is needed for clear conclusion. So in summary, we measured the proximity zone sizes of 11 faint quasars at redshift 6. And we expanded the dynamic range of luminosity to the faint end. The obtained luminosity evolution is close to the model with the ionized IGM, suggesting that the surrounding IGM is mostly ionized at the epoch. And the redshift evolution is relatively shallow, implying that the proximity zone sizes is not sensitive to the neutral fraction of the universe. And there are some exceptionally small proximity zone sizes. This implies their quasar young age. However, larger sample and follow-up observation are needed for clear conclusion. And that's it for my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for a great talk. Uh, we have some time for questions. Uh, let me ask you a quick one. Maybe I just didn't catch it. Um, how how was the redshift determined for these uh, faint quasars? Was it Magnum 2 or ELMA? Uh, I think it was observed by ELMA. Okay. By MC2 or C2 emission. Okay, because of course they're they're smaller than serum sizes, so the rest should become more even more important. Um, any other questions? All right, so if you have more questions, please uh, just use Slack and continue discussion.